have two stylus in here and we have different pin points that's what you call them and it does feel really good in my hand and then you have the small one has two buttons and this even feels even better it's a lot lighter you have your usbs for both of these assuming this one goes to that because it has that symbol and then that one goes to that one but nice pretty impressive anything else in here oh nice a little sticker maybe you can put that on the back or something very nice let me see what's under here oh some more goodies so there is a case that comes with it this is really nice. So if you open it, it looks like you can put like this in here. Probably put like that in there in the section. This is just the user manual, so I'm just going to keep that there. But then you can put like your cord here. I would put the board here because it's going to give you the most cushion. You don't want it to like get damaged or anything when you're traveling. And then you have this, which I would have this with my Cintiq. But just for sake of demonstration, I would... Put that like right there. Then you just fold this bad boy. And you can carry this, you know, on a plane, train, car, backpack. It's pretty sturdy. And I like the texture. You know, it's like a denim texture. And there you go. All right. So after you've registered the product and set it all up, you have these settings here. So you can see how much power that's in the pen tablet, which is awesome, by the way. That alone is pretty cool. So it comes at 3% battery power, just so you know. So make sure that you charge it. You have the pins here. This, if you click on the pin, I clicked on the first one. You can set the eraser. You can set the undo button for the top. You can set the uh, double click and the right click. You can change the pressure sensitivity. I'm going to keep it at this just to see kind of how it goes. If we go back, let's go back to the home screen. If you click on thin pin, all it does is it takes you down here. To be honest, I would experiment with just practicing what you have and don't go too nuts with it. If something doesn't add up or doesn't work and you're like, gosh, that's terrible, then go in here and start playing around with it. I'm using the digital tablet to do this. So here I'm moving around with the digital tablet and it's pretty good. If you haven't used a digital tablet before in your life, you do not have to have the pen touching the board for it to move around. You can have it hover. I would say within a one inch from the surface to move it around. The only time you need to actually touch the pen or the stylus to the board is when you're actually drawing. But if you're just moving a mouse, you can hover and it's fine. See, it's at 15% now. It's only been plugged in for about, well, let's say about 10 minutes. So it may take about 190 to 100 minutes to charge this thing. If you look at this, you can actually change the colors of the board. So I'll show a live video of that too. But this is how you change the colors. Um, I'll just keep it my brand colors here for our studio. You can change the brightness. You can have it off if it's like super distracting or you can have it super bright. Um, I usually would keep it super bright. This left button is to launch your settings. That's what we're seeing here. This will adjust your pressure and then this will change your display. There's a link in the in the YouTube video that goes over the setup. Click on that and I think I kind of repeat the same thing. Then you got the preferences. This was in the setup. This is what I was saying that you can go back in and change this. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, you can have a sleep timer for the Tim tablet. I think this is a good timer. I trust the developers sort of picking the right time. So I don't go into any craziness with that. You can also change the colors based on the program you're using, which I think is pretty cool. So if I'm in Photoshop, I'll set it to blue. If I want it to be an illustrator, I'll set it to like a yellow color. I keep both of my bright colors. That's kind of cool. What's interesting is that these are the only two programs that you can have custom settings with that I have on my computer. So it already knows, but you can actually add more if you say, if I decide to install Toon Boom Harmony. Actually, funny enough, Toon Boom Harmony would actually come up by itself if we had that installed. I wouldn't worry about that. And that is pretty much it with the setup. So we'll go over other things, like you can remove applications, you can export, import settings. I think it's time for us to go over the actual drawing capabilities. So I'll probably use Photoshop for that. Yeah, let's go ahead and move into that part. Before we go into reviewing this product, I wanna go over a few things. So let's just go over the specs of this device. So it is a 16 by nine editing tablet. So that's great. It's very light. You can keep it charged up to 16 hours. This thing is wireless. And then it has the electromagnetic resonance, three buttons, pins, all that good stuff. You got some nibs. 
we got four felt nibs and six standard nibs. The felt nibs are actually pretty amazing. If you really want a very organic feel when you're drawing, I would opt out to using the felt nibs. But if you want the standard nibs, it's fine too. But those felt nibs is something else. You do have a glove. It's a medium glove. It's amazing. I've always wanted one for the last like six years. I just never got around to getting one. So the fact that this has one is amazing. Big plus. The nib extracting ring, you would need to use that to extract the nibs. I can make a separate video on that. If necessary, just leave a comment if you want to know how to do it. Then you have your warranty booklet, quick start guide. This is the board. I think it's actually pretty good for drawing. First, I had my reservations because I'm used to a 13-inch tablet, but this thing is actually pretty good. And then these are the nibs I was telling you about. You even have the tilt support. So if you want to do shading, you have that. Yeah, pressure sensitivity that can be modified. If you click the middle button, it takes you right into pressure sensitivity and you can set it up based on the program that you're using. You have lag-free tracking, which I was like super impressed with. That was amazing within itself. And you have 2D and 3D design. This thing is pretty advanced for what it's worth. Keep in mind, some, the quick keys are sold separately. That's why during the setup, I didn't choose that option. The quick keys is something that I would highly recommend for editors too. This thing is a beast. I might see if I can get one of these and do a separate review on it. But for me, because I understand what quick keys are as far as what they do for like other software. So if you have a MIDI keyboard, let's say you're using Adobe Character Animator and you want to trigger replays. Well, you can do that with a MIDI keyboard. I'm wondering if you can do that with this. I'm not quite sure. I would have to look into this. Like I said, I want to do a separate video. But if you if you look here, you have the undo, shift, redo, up, new layer, command. I'm pretty sure you can program these to anything you want. All right, let's get into the actions. I'm going to try to draw on this tablet. The sensitivity of movement is kind of a bit sensitive. <laughs> like, you so sensitive. I'm going to go closer in, and then we can really see what's happening. When you watch this, keep in mind that I haven't drawn a digital tablet in probably about five years. So it definitely takes a steady hand because I've been using a Cintiq for a long time. So I'm going to try this with a Cintiq. This is probably not fair what I'm about to do, but I wanted to show you the difficulty sometimes with doing the drawing. All right, so I'm going to hide the drawing tablet. We're going to use blue to show the Cintiq. So that's with the Cintiq. This is with the drawing tablet. The Cintiq is going to be easier because you're drawing right on the image. So if we zoom out, that's the Cintiq. And then this is the drawing tablet. So now that we're in display three, I'm going to go to the healing option, healing brush. And then we're going to zoom in. So we got to use alt click to define, which we already do that, right? And then we start painting. This is actually working. And keep in mind, I'm doing this all with the tablet. This thing is a beast when it comes to photo editing. I even think it works really well with compositing in some ways. Xhance Labs tablet is really amazing. I give this thing like a five out of five. It's really good. All right, just want to do a final recap on this product and just give you my final thoughts. Photo editing is amazing with this product. I was really happy with that. Modifying photos, tweaking it, using the mesh warp, all that good stuff was really easy. The other thing is drawing. I haven't drawn with a tablet myself in a long time. It's been like five years. I've always used a Cintiq, and as you can see in the demonstrations, the Cintiq was better, but it could be just I had a shaky hand or whatever. Usually I don't, but I think technology hasn't made me weak when it comes to shaky hands. But growing up when I was young, I never had a shaky hand with that. So if you're good with a tablet or you're a really good artist and you don't have a shaky hand, this tablet was pretty good. I would give it maybe like a four out of five. The drivers was easy to set up. There's no disc. Because like, who has a disk drive anymore? I don't. So you just plug in the drivers and then you go through the setup. There's that piece of paper that was in the unboxing that I showed you. Not the, the yellow and white board. It was like a poster board. Go there, do the quick start, connect, download driver, register. Boom. Super easy. Took like five minutes to do the whole thing. I was ready to go. So I would say setup is really easy. I like the colors on the board. That's really cool. So for setup, I would give it a five out of five.
I had no issues with setup, very easy, which says a lot when it comes to setting up tablets in the first place. We went over to size, it's great. Programmable buttons is good. The only thing I don't like about the programmable buttons is that you can't set up profiles. So like if I go to the three, if I go to here, I actually got to pick a program to set up to have it where I want it. It doesn't have miscellaneous quote unquote programs. You do have a default, but that's it, which is not good. So when it comes to that, I would give it like a three out of five. The good news is it does have wireless connectivity, Bluetooth. So that's good. It doesn't have a touch wheel, which means you have to get that other product we talked about, the quick keys. I wish it had a touch wheel. That would be great for zooming in, zooming out. But as we saw, we can set up zoom in and zoom outs with the pin. So that's the good. If you really want more versatility, having two pins may not be a bad idea. So if you don't want to go with the three button pin, you can also go with the thin pin. Speaking of pins, I do think the pin sensitivity movement is a little high. See, you can change the pressure, but you can't change how fast the pin moves. There might be a setting you can do it in Windows 10, but I won't go into that since I'm just reviewing the product. But that's pretty much that. I would say if I didn't have a Cintiq and I needed something, I just needed something, I would go with this option because I know with like a Cintiq, yeah, Wacom Cintiq is $649. So if you don't feel like you're able to cough up that much money for a Cintiq, then this makes more sense to pay $169. This putting perspective in what we went over in this video, you're paying that extra money and you're getting that luxury of accuracy when you're drawing on a Cintiq. But if you're not able to do that, then this will be the better alternative for the Cintiq. So all in all, if you have any questions about any of this, definitely uh, leave a comment on this video. If you do want me to do a video on how to remove the tips or the nubs, leave a comment in the video. Whoever leaves a comment, please send more likes. And if I feel motivated to do it, I'll do it. That's it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and share with others what you have learned. All right. See ya. Adios. What? <laughs>